but I think that Crawford and Virgil Ortiz next year, first quarter, will be a super fight. As Virgil Ortiz stepped into the ring to battle Siri Bohuchuk, the wheels were already in motion for a showdown with Crawford in his next bout. You want to make a big fight? Crawford and Virgil wins and make Crawford next. After Virgil Ortiz's hard-fought victory against Seri Bohachuk in Turkey, Oscar De La Hoya agreed to set up the highly anticipated bout between Ortiz and Crawford. So, you know, Turkey, hats off to you. You know, you're doing a great job. Keep on, keep on doing what you're doing. Virgil Ortiz Jr. has been racking up decisive victories since the start of his career, but this time was different. For the first time, his opponent pushed him to the limit, taking the fight to the distance and leaving Ortiz with a bruised and battered face. Despite the challenge, Ortiz took on the formidable WBC interim junior middleweight champion Sarai Bohachuk and emerged victorious in a thrilling showdown that left us all in awe of his grit and determination. Even though Bohachuk put up a fierce fight, Ortiz's performance also earned the admiration of Oscar De La Hoya and Turkey El Al Sheikh, who watched the action unfold from ringside. You know, a lot of fans say, uh, oh, how come we don't fight this guy or fight this guy or whatever, or, well, sh I'm trying to fight the best, but I mean, you see that it's it's not up to, it's it's not under my control. Like if it was under my control, I would have fought the world champions already at 140. I would have fought my 147. No, Crawford, we have a, we have a, we have a thought about it. But our taste, we can support, support to have rematch like this. This performance was the catalyst that led Oscar De La Hoya and Turkey Alal Sheikh to greenlight the fight against Crawford. However, for De La Hoya, this wasn't a spur of the moment decision. The promoter had been eyeing this matchup for some time, previously stating that if Ortiz triumphed in his next two bouts, a unification fight with Crawford would be inevitable. With Ortiz's victory over Bohachuk, one piece of the puzzle is now in place. Next on the horizon for Ortiz is a highly anticipated showdown with Tim Tsiu later this year. You want to fight Terence Crawford right now? I would love to fight him, man. He's, he's, I think he's like probably the number one pound for pound fighter right Do now. Do you think he's out of his? If you're set to challenge IBF champion Bakram Moraz Alev for his title, the stakes are high and a victory could put you in the crosshairs of Virgil Ortiz. Ortiz, fresh off his win against Bohachuk, could see you as the next stepping stone in his journey. But the real question is whether you'll take that risk, especially with the allure of a more lucrative payday in a potential bout against Crawford. Your team might consider avoiding a clash with Ortiz, viewing it as an unnecessary gamble, especially since Ortiz's title is only the WBC interim belt not the full one held by Sebastian Fandora. But now he's in the audience. Who would you like Tim Su to fight since you want Ortiz to fight Crawford next? I will not work with Tim Su. What, what happened? Oscar De La Hoya is fully aware of the stakes and the challenges that lie ahead, as he shared in a recent interview with Fight Hype. He praised Terence Crawford, calling him arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, and highlighted Crawford's fan-friendly style and undefeated record. However, De La Hoya also hinted at the potential impact of age on Crawford, especially as he climbs weight classes and faces younger, hungrier opponents. Fighters like Virgil Ortiz, who recently made headlines by moving up to 154 orbs and defrening WBA champion Israel Madrimov in a grueling 12-round unanimous decision, are the kind of challengers who could test Crawford's limits. Yeah, with you, it takes a moment to kind of wrap your brain around that and make. Ooh. Oh, Kavayaskis comes forward, and Bud Crawford was hurt. The fight, which headlined a riot season event at the underscore underscore stadium in Los Angeles, showcased Crawford's skill and determination. However, much like Ortiz's tough bout against Bohachuk, Crawford didn't have an easy night. Madrimov's style and power presented challenges for Crawford, especially considering he was returning to the ring after a 13-month layoff. Despite the hurdles, Crawford's experience and resilience shone through, 
making it a hard-earned victory. They're gonna skip over me. That's gonna, I mean, I'm, that's gonna be. You know? uh, is it a good fight? Yeah, but I'm supposed to be the one fighting Majima. When I heard that news, I was like, what the? F like, that's supposed to be me. De La Hoya remarked on Crawford's performance, acknowledging the difficulty of moving up to the 100 and 54 orbs weight class and facing such a tough opponent. He noted that Crawford didn't appear as dominant as he had in previous bouts against smaller fighters. But he emphasized that this is all part of the learning curve as Crawford adjusts and establishes himself in the new weight division. Um, yeah, no, I, Crawford I love because he's probably the best pound for pound fight in the world. His style is fan friendly. Um, he's a tremendous boxer undefeated um you know he went up a weight class and he he met up a guy who was really tough and sometimes you're not gonna look as good crawford's victory over madrimov secured him the wba title at 154 orbs but the path to becoming the undisputed champion in the junior middleweight division remains challenging with three more belts still to claim the next steps in crawford's journey will be critical and if one of those involves a clash with Virgil Ortiz Jr., it's bound to be a formidable test, especially as Crawford nears his 38th birthday. De La Hoya expressed confidence in the difficulties that lie ahead for Crawford, acknowledging that the road to undisputed status will not be easy. As you did uh, in your previous fights, you know, fighting smaller guys, and it's okay. It's a learning process. He probably fought the toughest guy. De La Hoya remarked about Madrimov, noting that while he may not have been the most dangerous opponent, he was certainly the toughest. Looking ahead, De La Hoya and Turkey envision a super fight between Crawford and Ortiz in the first quarter of next year. He expressed optimism that if Ortiz secures a victory against Tim Siu in his upcoming bout, it will set the stage for an epic showdown with Crawford. He probably fought the toughest guy, um, not the most dangerous guy, but the toughest guy. De La Hoya believes this fight could be a pivotal moment for Ortiz. If everything unfolds as planned, Ortiz has the potential to not only claim the title in the 154-pound division, but also emerge as a new star in the boxing world. However, defeating Crawford will be a formidable challenge. Despite his age, Crawford's experience, ring IQ, and adaptability make him a tough opponent. Yet, Ortiz's youth, power, and relentless pursuit of victory could provide him with the edge he needs to dethrone the champion. But I think that Crawford and Virgil Ortiz next year, first quarter, will be a super fight. With Ortiz's victory over Bohachuk, the fight is no longer just a possibility. It's officially happening. The confirmation from Turkey Alec and Oscar De La Hoya has set the wheels in motion and fans can eagerly anticipate what promises to be an unforgettable clash between two of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Turkey Alec made a grand entrance at Saturday night's middleweight bout between Virgil Ortiz Jr. and Seri Bohachuk, capturing the attention of everyone present with the potential he could bring to the table after the fight. Following Ortiz's win, Turkey announced during a brief interview on DA Zin that a showdown between him and the newly crowned title holder Terence Crawford is now officially confirmed. That Virgil lost that fight. Robert Garcia knew and Virgil Ortiz dad and Virgil Ortiz knew. But they want to make Virgil Ortiz against Terence Crawford cool. But don't come over here doing that craziness, yo Turk. With his undefeated record on the line against Ukraine's Bohachuk, Ortiz faced immense pressure as the WBC interim junior middleweight belt was at stake. However, Turkey's announcement elevated the stakes even further. A victory would not only secure a title for Ortiz, but also guarantee a shot at one of boxing's most revered champions, Terence Crawford. As the interview progressed, Oscar De La Hoya joined the conversation, expressing his excitement about a potential Ortiz-Crawford matchup. He outlined plans for a blockbuster card that would feature the Ortiz showdown alongside a lightweight title fight between unbeaten WBC champion Shaker Stevenson and top contender William Zapata from De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, underscoring the significance of Ortiz's performance against Boachuk.
big fight against Crawford. That's the reason why we love Kirby coming into the sport of boxing that he loves. Despite being knocked down twice, Ortiz showed remarkable grit and determination in his fight against Bohachuk, which was broadcast live on DAZN. This bout marked the first time in Ortiz's career that he went the distance, ending his impressive streak of 21 consecutive knockouts. His victory not only added a significant title to his resume, but also opened up a wealth of opportunities for the 26-year-old sensation. As the new WEC interim super welterweight world champion, Ortiz now has the chance to select his next opponent from a roster of highly talented fighters, leaving boxing fans buzzing with excitement over the potential matchups. I'm, it's, it's kind of, I, it feels up. You know, I feel like I'm just, uh, just kind of on the sideline at this point. People are getting mad at me for not fighting the best. Well, shit, like, I'm not getting the opportunity. With his newfound power as champion, Ortiz already has a couple of opponents in mind. In a post-fight interview with DAZN, he expressed great interest in a matchup against Terence Crawford, following his hard-fought victory. Ortiz didn't shy away from the challenge, stating, Let's do it, man. I'm ready for challenge. I think Bud is probably pound for pound number one in the world. And I want to show that I have what it takes to beat him. Ortiz's confidence and eagerness to face one of the best in the sport highlight his ambition and desire to cement his status as a top fighter. I'm the number one contender for the WBA. You know, once a person, once a boxer becomes a champion, they have to fight the number one guy. It becomes the mandatory. I'm the man. Crawford, with an impressive record of 41 wins and no losses, including 31 knockouts, is coming off a victory that secured him the WBA Super Welterweight World title. As one of boxing's most respected and skilled fighters, he has a target on his back, and Ortiz is eager to take him on. However, Crawford has made it clear that he has plenty of options ahead of him as well. And, no, I respect him as a fighter though, that's the thing. When I wanna fight people, it doesn't mean that, oh, I don't like you, like, let's, let's get it on. It's more like I respect your skills and... During an appearance on Sean Porter's Asterisk, the Portaway Asterisk podcast, Crawford stated that if he had to choose between Sebastian Fandora, Ortiz, and Jermal Charlo as his next opponent at 154 orbs, he would prefer to face Fandora. However, the question remains whether Turkey Alal Sheikh's offer could entice Crawford to reconsider and step into the ring with Ortiz instead. And, his peak. and you're saying you could be the peak prime Terrence Crawford. I'm saying I believe that I can. I respect it 100%. I believe that I can. The potential financial incentives, along with Ortiz's rising reputation, could be enough to influence Crawford's decision. Another intriguing option for Ortiz is a matchup against the winner of the anticipated fight between Sebastian Fandora, the current WBC Super Welterweight World Champion, and Errol Spence Jr., a former unified welterweight champion. While nothing official has been announced, Ortiz expressed interest in facing the winner of that bout, mentioning both Fandora and Spence after his victory over Bohachuk. There are five fighters that you would like to fight coming up. Coming up, uh, so we got Tim Zhu, we got Crawford, Spence, or I guess you can say the winner of Spence or Fandora. Um, Charlo's a good one. Ortiz's interest in the winner of the Fandora-Spence matchup is well-founded as the interim WBC title holder at 154 pounds is in an ideal position to challenge for the full title. A fight against Fandora, in particular, would present an intriguing clash of styles, given Fandora's towering height and reach. This advantage poses a unique challenge, but Ortiz has consistently demonstrated his ability to overcome adversity. If Spence were to win in his potential showdown with Fandora, a fight between Spence and Ortiz would be equally compelling. Spence's experience and skill set make him a formidable opponent, and a bout with Ortiz would likely deliver a thrilling, action-packed experience for fans. I, I don't think of him, you know, he's just, if he fights, if he fights, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Have you seen his fights? I would imagine you're familiar with him. Like, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen some of his fights. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I say? You know, he's a... Uh, 
Tim Tiu is another name being floated as a potential opponent for Ortiz. The two fighters have previously entertained the idea of facing each other, and Tiu's interest has only intensified after watching Ortiz's victory over Boachuk. Look, I, I said it was fight of the year, yeah. and it was fight of the year. I mean, come on, this was a war. It was a close fight. Virgil attacked. A fight between Ortiz and Tim Tiu would undoubtedly capture the attention of boxing fans. Both fighters possess explosive power and a relentless style, making for an exciting matchup. Tiu, son of legendary boxer Costa Tiu, aims to solidify his status as a top contender with a win over Ortiz. For Ortiz, defeating Tiu would add another significant name to his record and bring him closer to unifying the titles in the super welterweight division. Mention Ortiz, uh, Virgil Ortiz. How far is he away? How close is he to a title shot in sharing the ring with Bud Crawford? I don't know. I don't know, but Virgil, you know, he's right there. You know, he's right there. You know, he's been proven uh, that he belongs with the top uh, fighters in the division. And, you know, uh, who knows? A couple of fights or next fight. What are your thoughts? Let's discuss in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. See you in the next one.